David, what has been the reaction there in Washington to the, to the Supreme Court uh, effectively hobbling the Voting Rights Act? Well, it's been split along the same lines that the court was split on. I mean, one of the things that's really striking here is you have five justices all appointed by Republican presidents voting for the majority decision and four justices all appointed by Democratic presidents dissenting here. And you see that same kind of split out in Congress. You see Democrats very upset about this rule and you see Republicans um, who have come out so far praising it, saying the Voting Rights Act has done its work. Uh, it may not be needed anymore. Now, the court actually said Congress may, if they want to, come up with a more updated uh, data-based formula for who actually is subjected to the Voting Rights Act, which jurisdictions are subjected to it. Uh, of this Congress, that seems very unlikely. What's likely to be the ramifications, the effect for Americans where they vote going forward? So you're right, Congress can make another law. What, what the Supreme Court struck down was the formula that determines which states must get preclearance for changing their voting laws. They didn't strike down the part that, 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 that allows for the preclearance. But the reality is, it seems very unlikely, despite the fact that this was passed with an overwhelming majority in Congress, very unlikely that Congress is going to go back in now and make a new formula. Because essentially some Congress members would be voting to have their own states get special federal oversight, which is hard to imagine. And so what that will mean is it will be easier for the states that are covered, predominantly in the Southeast, but not exclusively, to change their voting laws without getting federal approval in advance. All right. Well, thank you so much, David. Thank you, Marcus.